and what he needs to your culture to Yeah, really happy for him, really happy for us. Uh, I thought, you know, the, the I'll, I'll lump it in with Lou and Shea. I mean, all those guys' contracts start this year, and they're all long-term deals. And those are all, like, transcendent people for different reasons. You know, Shea, we've talked at length about. Lou, we've talked about. And Kemrich is um, obviously a great competitor and great team guy. But with a young team like this, he's also – there's an authenticity to him um, that I think gives everybody permission to be themselves and be who they are. And I think that's really important. So um, happy for us, happy for him. He seems like an underdog, but – one that doesn't have like this chip on his shoulder is that you, you have kind of a team of, of guys that are underdogs in that way how much of an example can he set in that direction um i mean i just think he's got a really unique balance of you know high high level of competitiveness and competitive motor and toughness uh but total team at the same time i mean there's literally never been a time mascala's in this category he's very similar they're both tough as nails but there's never been a time where they're out of character when it comes to the team. They're team first guys through and through, and, and they're never stepping outside of that in as long as I've known them. And so very unique in people, and uh, certainly guys, you know, we're really happy to have around. It's really good for our teams we grow. Four days of camp. You've put a lot of practices into that. How are you feeling just so far about the progress you guys have been able to make? Uh, really good after today. Today was a really competitive practice. I thought the guys, you know, really competed. It was really physical and spirited. Uh, but also a great sense of purpose. I thought we were a team that was practicing like we were preparing for something today. Um, and sometimes, you know, in the camp with practice after practice, you can get lost in the next drill or the next detail and not have it in the context. And I thought we, we showed great maturity today. Well, what kind of practice did you do today? It was full contact. It was a, Yesterday was lighter. It wasn't lighter, really. It was just not body on body. Today was full contact. I wanted to ask you about Aaron and just the progress that you've seen from him early on. Any early observations from him and the kind of summer that he's had? Um, I, I just I think he's really, first of all, all those guys did a hell of a job with their bodies. They really took advantage of the full 168 days in the offseason. He's definitely in that category. Um, and then the other thing that um, I would say about Aaron is is he's really ex he's become an expert at his own game. You know, he plays really within himself. He understands what his strengths are. He's very comfortable in his own skin. He never feels the need to do more than what he is. And what he does is very valuable to teams. He makes quick decisions on offense. He can make a shot. Um, and then on defense, he, he holds his own at the point of attack and is an excellent scheme defender as well. Is that something that he kind of found on his own, just being an expert in his own game, especially for a young guy? I feel like that's that's pretty rare to just find that and, and settle into that early on. Um, I we gave him a lot of direction on it early. Uh, not to take credit for it, though, because there's we give direction to every guy, and not every guy takes to that as quickly as he did. You know, it's like right after summer league, we we grabbed him and said, "This is going to be your pathway." And to his credit, like the first time we watched him with the blue, that's how he was playing, and he's just gotten better and better inside of that game. Is there a particular player that stood out to you all this first week? Pretty good. Uh, I mean, a lot of them. You know, I think for all different reasons. But you know, I said yesterday, no one's like falling behind, falling behind. Um, you know, so I would say no one's like put themselves out ahead of the group. You know, we're just assessing right now. Uh, but like I said, really competitive. Everybody's holding their own. Everybody has different strengths they bring to the team. We're really excited about all the guys we've got. I think you kind of mentioned that the that got the other day at the third. But um, I know, what I want to ask you is something to do a little bit related to the Utah Watanabe. Yep. And you know him, right? I do. And he's now fighting for the. The, like a final spot for the for the Nets. Yep. And I just kind of want to ask you, you know, it depends on the head coach, I think. But for you, what what kind of thing you look into, like, a, you know, those people who are fighting for the final spot, what kind of uh, part are you looking at, like a preseason games or in, in the training camp? Um, well, everybody's different, so I can't speak for Brooklyn. And yes, I know. It's also, um, it's Sam's decision, ultimately. Uh, that he's very collaborative with. I mean, we're involved in that. What I would say is, for us, and I can only speak for us, we're evaluating the body of work over the time that we've had the player. And so when somebody's new to camp, which is not the case this year, we can all, that's the only time period we have to assess them while, when they're inside our walls. But for guys that have been with us for multiple years, we certainly evaluate the camp and preseason games, but it's put into the larger context of their body of work while they're here. And then, you know, when you have to make decisions, you step back and that's what you evaluate.